Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland. Just doing the introduction to my weekly newsletter for March 29th, 2019. Um, been a wee bit more chatty in this uh, newsletter, I will say. Uh, I started off by uh, telling you that um, uh, we're no mu not much further along the road with Brexit. Uh, we had these indicative votes, they call them and there was eight motions went through for voting and none of them got a majority basically so I'm giving you a bit of background on that. Uh, I've also mentioned Donald Trump because he's come out of the the Mueller inquiry with no collusion findings but I'm also mentioning we might now see some uh, legal cases being made to prosecute the Democrats I'm suggesting you might want to read Conrad Black's take on this under the Electric Scotland section. And then I've done a little bit of uh, information about uh, Tartan Week coming up in both uh, the USA and Canada. Um, but I've also gone to, on to talk about a couple of ideas I've had for many years now. Uh, which basically has never been taken up by Scotland at all. I mean, I, I find it amazing, for example, that Scots in the Commonwealth do not get any inflation rises in their pension. But if you're in a non-Commonwealth country like the USA, for example, you do. And I don't really understand that. I would have thought, if anything, you would have got it with the Commonwealth countries, with the Queen as the head of the Commonwealth. So why this isn't dealt with, I really don't know, but certainly it's, uh, it's an issue that a lot of retirees that have retired to Commonwealth countries are a bit upset about, and I don't blame them in the least. Especially when you, if you go to a non-Commonwealth country, you'll get an increase. That's just terrible, really. Uh, anyway, uh, so hopefully you might be interested in what I have to say there. I didn't talk about the pensions in the newsletter, but I just thought I'd mention that because it came up just recently. Okay, so anyway, on to the news stories I've got for you this week. First story is scientists reveal ancient social networks using AI and X-rays. Since using x-rays to read historical documents has opened big doors for historians. So you might want to have a wee read of that. It's kind of interesting and a new way of looking at some old historical documents. Okay, and then uh, next story is a new conversation about Scottish higher education. It says a report out this week from the European Universities Association gives Scotland new reason to look and learn. Basically we've actually cut the funding for universities and um, what they're saying is that uh, countries like Sweden, Norway and, uh, and, and so forth they're actually putting more money in because they see that as the future. Um, but Scotland doesn't have a very good forward thinking attitude, I mean at least the SNP government doesn't. They don't seem to be capable of looking to the future and doing something to prepare us for the future. Uh, I mean just in this newsletter alone I've identified perhaps 8 billion that Scotland could be making over and above what they're currently making and that's uh, basically um, with working with the states and, and, and having attending Highland Games and Scottish festivals there. I reckon we can make an extra four billion. But also this um, university idea of the Highlands uh, for rural, a rural university could make another four billion. Now that's eight. I mean, there's other things we could do. So, you know, there's some big money we could make if we just get off that back size, really. Okay. The next story I've got for you is a Kenneth Roy Memorial Service. This is a video. It's been put on YouTube. Uh, Kenneth Roy was a journalist for half a century in the kind of career which is now rare. He began on titles like the Falkirk Mail 
and Greenock Telegraph, graduated to the Glasgow Herald, presented on BBC Scotland and wrote for Scotland on Sunday and The Observer. He then started his own online publication, The Scottish Review. A very touching um, uh, memorial service and I watched the whole thing and even shed a wee tear at one point. So I hope you might want to have a wee look at that. Okay, the next story is e-passport gates for CanZ UK countries confirmed for June 2019. It says the UK government has confirmed that as of June 2019, millions of passengers from Canada, Australia and New Zealand will be eligible to use the new e-passport gates at British airports in an effort to promote closer cooperation between the CanZ countries. The Chancellor also announced that to coincide with the e-passport gates expansion, the government will begin to abolish landing cards for non-EEA travellers in June, meaning citizens of Canada, Australia and New Zealand will be exempt from the landing card requirement. So that's really great news. Because, you know, you can currently have quite long uh, lines of, you've got to wait in to get through, but this will speed that up immensely. Okay, the next story is Can't Get the Staff. It says Scenic Highlands at Eye of Scotland's Brexit Storm. They simply can't get the staff. And I think that's why, even with a Brexit or a no deal Brexit, we'll still have to look closely at how we can uh, help Scotland get more immigrants in to work in the country. Okay. Deliver a real Brexit or there will be a political reckoning. This is a story from Think Scotland. It says our politicians, through their deceit, self-aggrisement and short-termism and ignorance, have brought disgrace on this nation. Very swinging attack there. Remembering the Scottish architect who created the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., said so historians and academics from the US and Scotland were among key speakers at an event commemorating the achievements of William Thornton. So that might enjoy when you read it there. Unfortunately, there's no videos or anything that seem to be made available so we could listen to some of the talks. I think that's a bit of a downside, really. I think our reporters need to do a better job. Um, Republican Delight. Democrat dismay as Mueller details released. Says Mueller found no evidence the Trump campaign colluded with Russia in the 2016 election. Then, China widens ban on Canada's canola imports to second firm Viterra. Says China expanded its ban on Canadian canola seed imports on Tuesday to include shipments from uh, Viterra. Incorporated, the latest development in a wider trade dispute between the two countries. I'm told exports to China exceed 4 billion, so this is a serious blow to Canadian exports. And of course, there's the ongoing discussions about the, um, the you know, the USA have asked Canada to hold this uh, CEO of the Chinese firm because they're looking at taking it to court for corruption and stuff like that. So they've put um, a request in for her to be held. And in international law, Canada doesn't really have an option for that. But China's taking a very bad view of it and arrested two Canadians and accused them of spying, which is clearly rubbish. And now they're starting to hit the economic side. So all in all, relations between China and Canada are pretty bad right now. Okay, the next story is US employers, Indian employees, everybody wants a piece of Canada. It says the Canadian dream is quickly replacing the American one. This article examines the ease of immigration to Canada as opposed to the USA. The next story is the discontent, or disconnect rather, between Parliament and the people 
is exacerbated by BBC pro-Remain bias. So the British public are increasingly fed up with a news agenda that is saturated with pro-EU bias and why those being interviewed by them don't mention their anti-Brexit credentials. It seems a simple but effective thing to do by holding them to account but for some reason this isn't used by them and I do wonder why not. So you might be interested in reading that story. How Scotland could be 4.5 billion a year richer. This is if Scotland's rural economy was more like Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands and New Zealand, it could be 4.5 billion a year better off. Setting up the country's first dedicated rural university would help make that vision of the future reality, writes Professor Wayne Powell. This is one I mentioned a wee bit earlier to you, so worth the read of that. The no majority for any of Brexit options. The failure to identify a clear way forward led to angry exchanges in the Commons with critics of the process saying it had been an abject failure. Then maps show land confiscated from the old fox. Maps made to help the government control the confiscated estate of notorious Jacobites have been made available to the public online. The clan Fraser has allowed them to use their historic maps which show great detail and many forgotten names of places. Pretty interesting that one. Uh, keep no deal in play but a Canada style trade deal with the EU remains the best option. As we approach either the 12th of April or 22nd of May 2019, it is worth recalling the chain of events which has led to where we are now. Then the final story I've got is Nicola Sturgeon interferes with Hollywood ministers' jobs, claims an SMP, MSP. The MSP for Adrie and Schott said Miss Sturgeon's creation of a policy unit headed by civil servants rather than politicians, was a big mistake. It's this central control that I, I object to with the SNP. I want to control everything. And, and, and frankly, it's just bad. OK. Anyway, on to Electric Canadian. I've got the Canadian Archive report up for 1901. And remember, these reports are really interesting, especially because the it gives you a summary of what he's putting through at the beginning of each report. So you get a, an overview of the kind of collections he's building up from London, Paris and other, other areas of the world. Doing a fantastic job and just reading the introduction alone is worthwhile. Then the Canadian Horticulturalist. I've added volume 19 for 1896. Um, and then we've got, I uh, found a new publication, Canadian Home Journal. So I found another magazine and I've added it to our magazine page with links to other editions on the Internet Archive. So that's towards the foot of the magazine page. Then Across an Ocean and Time. The World is Seen by Henry Nash, by John C. Nash, which you can read at, and i give you a link. The Conspiracy of Pontiac and the Indian War. After the conquest of Canada with Francis Parkman, this is the sixth edition, published in 1870 in two volumes. So it's, well, I, I thought it was interesting anyway. I also got a book called Petroleum in Canada by Victor Ross, produced in 1917. So that's kind of interesting as well. The Pioneers, A Tale of the Western Wilderness by Alexander Mackenzie. It's funny, I checked with this because I, when I was reading it, I said, I've read that already. It must be up on the site. But I did a search and I couldn't find it. So I've obviously read it, meant to put it up and didn't, so now it's up. So I hope you'll enjoy reading that one. And then Pioneers in Canada by Sir Harry Johnston. Um, and this was in 1912. And that's another interesting pioneering book. 
Oh yeah, and then I, I discovered this uh, interesting wee publication, is Discovering the Costs of Living in Chatham, Kent. And of course Chatham, Kent is where I live. And so I put that up along with a wee history of the area, and you can read this uh, at the link I provide. Um, I've also given you a link to a website which gives much the same information, but for 2016-17 whereas the, this PDF is for 2014. And then Fort Chippewan. Two books in the area which you can read. And I'll give you a link to, to read them. First Nations area, that. And finally, Conrad Black, uh, Brexit's a mess, and here's what is coming next. That's in his view, of course. Then unsurprisingly, Muller comes up empty. And that's one I suggest you might want to read if you're interested in Trump. Now, on to Electric Scotland. Well, I've got the Scottish Review up for volume 30 for July and October 1897. Um, I've got Historical Guide to Brechin and Neighbourhood, which is a, a good book. Epitaphs and inscriptions from burial grounds and old buildings in the northeast of Scotland with historical, biographical, genealogical and antiquarian notes, also an appendix of illustrative papers by Andrew Jervis, FSA Scott, and it's in two volumes produced in 1875. Uh, I also added to the page another book by him, which is Memorials of Angus and the Marne. Then Folklore Journal. I've already got Volume 1 up on the site. I've now added Volume 2, produced in 1884. And then David Rory. He was a doctor, a poet and a folklorist. And I added him to a significant Scots page, along with links to three of his books. Then Clan Lach and Associate of Canada got in touch, and I've got their copy of the Spring 2019 newsletter. Then an interesting one I came across, the Crimean Commission and the Chelsea Board. It says a review of the proceedings and report of the board for Colonel Tullock, late commissioner in the Crimea. This is in 1857. Um, it's quite an interesting insight into how the, the army was organised back in these days. Oh yes, and Macbeth. I decided that really I should put up Macbeth by William Shakespeare in the Macbeth page, and I've now done that. Uh, I've always meant to do it, but never quite got around to it, but just reading something the other day there that said to me, I, I've got to do that, and I've done it now. The, the actual version of Macbeth is um, an up-to-date volume, which uh, has taken away the old language of Shakespeare and made it more modern, perhaps more understandable to people of today, because some of them do struggle with the old language. And then I heard from Stanley Bruce uh, and his series, The Shipbuilders of Aberdeen. So I've got another book in this series about John Smith and Company. And you can read it under the book section uh, on the page that I give you. And then finally, The History of Dunbar. It's from the earliest records to the present time by James Miller, published in 1859. So it's kind of interesting. And then we're on to the story. And the story this week is Lectures on Justice, Police, Revenue and Arms delivered in the University of Glasgow by Adam Smith. And it's reported by a student in 1763 and edited with introduction and notes by Edwin Cannon uh, of Oxford at the Clarendon Press in 1896. Basically, Adam Smith, of course, Wealth of Nations, you'll know him. Um, so, uh, it's quite a wee interesting story, and I'll leave you to read it, and I hope you enjoy it. And I've put a link to the full book, because it's a book review, of course, that I made the story a basis of. So, um, if you want to read the whole thing, then I've given you a link to the book, because I I found a copy. I've added it to the foot of our, our Adam Smith page. 
Okay, and, and, and that's it. And nice to get a couple of comments from last uh, week's newsletter. I hope I'll continue to get some more comments on this one. Uh, I think uh, Sandy was uh, a bit annoyed at me of calling Mrs. May mentally unstable or something. So um, I took it back, as it were, and but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Of course, I've got my views on things and you'll have your views on things. So whether we meet, I don't know. But anyway, that's my views. I think you're doing a very bad job, really. And I still think the deal she's brought back is terrible. But, well, that's for the people of the UK to decide, isn't it? Okay, so there you go. That's the new standard for this week. Hope you find things in it you're going to enjoy reading. And certainly if you have any other ideas about things you'd like me to cover, uh, or try and find out more information for you about, then, you know, drop me a note, let me know, or leave a comment. Okay, have a great weekend when it comes. <laughs>